I'm uh, Brady Bonsell, and this is my wife Sherry, and uh, we've got five kids. Uh, you know, our, our daughter Haley, who's who's ten, uh, probably about about two weeks after I accepted uh, a position here in Kearney, so we were we were moving from a couple of hours away. About two weeks after I accepted that, as is the first time that we noticed that. Um, there was, there was some sort of a, a tick or something that we couldn't identify for sure, and it turns out uh, it was infantile spasms, which is a, a form of epilepsy. I remember the, the doctor gave us the diagnosis at Children's in Omaha, Children's Hospital in Omaha, and um, she just said it very matter-of-factly, told us that it was poor prognosis, just said it very... Um, it felt very heartless as she was telling it to us. There was a lot of shock on on our part and fear and um, uncertainty of what the future would look like. And um, it, it was neat to see God move us to Kearney because right away we were given a lot of resources that we wouldn't have had in Ogallala had we stayed there. And so once, once the seizures went away, it's almost like it peeled away that layer, but there's other layers under that. And so, so for her now, it's pretty significant autism that has set in. It's, it's wearing. Um, Haley, it would be like having a two-year-old all the time, a one-and-a-half to two-year-old who doesn't understand danger or anything like that. You can't trust them for more than 30 seconds. Gets into things, yeah. makes messes, breaks things, but physically as a very active, athletic 10-year-old. That translates into our family that someone is literally always watching her. You know, if I have to go do something, I'll say, Nathan, could you watch Haley? I have to go, you know, whatever it is. And the kids, the other kids just, that's normal to them that someone always is watching Haley and an example what this is just a normal example one day I was doing the laundry she went out into the backyard all I did was take out the clothes out of the washer put them in the dryer and in that amount of time I went out to check on her in the backyard she had I saw the gate was open she had gone out the gate out the front yard I ran to the street she doesn't talk so you can't call for her she won't answer she had already run a block and a half down the street and another car was coming and I know that she doesn't know to stay on her side of the road but that car probably thought she knew to stay on her side of the road and so I took off sprinting and sure enough she did start to veer into the path of that other vehicle and they stopped but that's just, that's a constant with her. So. I think it's really easy considering it's a struggle and, and it's challenging and, and all of that to, uh, it's actually pretty easy to forget the blessings or not, you know, you know how it is when, when there's something negative, you can just dwell on it forever. And when there's a blessing, you celebrate it for 30 seconds <laughs> and then you move on to the next negative thing to dwell on. So. I think too, I was hearing on my bridge radio this week about, they were talking about what is the object of your faith? And, you know, that should be God himself, should be the object of your faith. But sometimes the object of our faith is either a certain outcome or, or just our faith itself. We think we can muster up enough faith. Um, and early on I struggled with that because I had faith in the outcome that Haley would be healed. I wanted, I wanted this to be healed, you know, and I didn't want to go down this path. But but that, is, that wasn't what God had in mind. And I guess I've just grown to realize I do want to have open hands with my life, with what he wants to do with our life and um, whatever that may be. And I just, I just want to have faith in who he is, in you know, God himself. Um, I remember the deacon and deaconesses bought a pool pass for our family when Haley was little and that meant so much to the other kids because sometimes they, you know, there's many times, even nowadays, they'll, their friends will want them to go do something and they'll have to tell them, sorry, I have to watch my sister. You know, they, they have to make sacrifices too. So 
And I think it's important to remember the other kids. People can help bless the other kids too. I was given this, it's, it's entitled Welcome to Holland. I was given it by another mother who has a special needs child and it just talks about when you have a special needs child, it's sort of like everyone's going to Italy. It's flashy, it's exciting. That's where everyone's going, but you get off the plane and you landed in Holland. That's not what you expected and um, it's a slower pace and it's not as flashy and you keep hearing everybody else talk about how great it is to go to Italy and um, you know it, it says but everyone you know is busy coming and going and they're all bragging about what a wonderful time they had there and for the rest of your life you will say yes that's where I was supposed to go that's what I had planned and the pain of that will never ever go away because the loss of that dream is a very significant loss. And it goes on to talk about, you know, now this person says, I've been in Holland for over a decade now and it has become home. This journey has been more challenging and at times I would and still do stomp my feet and cry out in frustration and protest, but I have learned to slow down in ways too and look closer at things with a new appreciation for Holland. and. I think, I think that's important, you know, Paul talks about being content in whatever circumstance you're in and I think truly that's where you're going to find your joy is, is being content with what God has given you.